Right, so uh, thank you and welcome everyone. I'll call this, uh, I guess, special council meeting of uh, scheduled council meeting to order um, to deal with one topic, which is the capital budget. Can I have a uh, motion um, to approve the agenda? So moved. Um, move. I Wayne seconded somebody. Second that. Okay, seconded by Bill. Uh, I think we'll do what we did um, last time. We'll just go around. Um, so, uh, yes or no, I or nay. So, Bill. Yay. Cheryl. Yay. Wayne. Yay. Jennifer. Yay. Michael. Yay. Andrew. Yay. Um, yay. So, the agenda is approved. And as I said, we just have one uh one item and that is the capital budget for the year 2020 well it's a 10-year proposed budget so i'll turn it over to the cao to begin leading us through that okay i'm just going to pull up the slide deck here and see if we can share it perfect and i probably will i'll ask if people want to mute their microphones while uh tammy's leading us through this and if you do have questions obviously unmute your microphone but that way if you're shuffling papers or writing stuff down it won't um won't interfere with the audio okay is that coming through for everybody no no So that there's that share icon at the bottom. Does that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I have to um, <clears throat> just hang one, hang tight for one minute here. Okay. So while you're doing that, maybe I'll I'll ask if any councillors have any announcements um, that they want to bring. I know there's not a lot going on, but um, if there's anything that needs to be brought forward for uh, for the community does anyone have anything no okay i'll i'll share that um today when i did my daily um update mondays i've been doing videos and so part of the video today was um i've asked for kids in the community who i know are looking for things to do if they have um, a drawing they want to do or a picture or something of something that's um important to them or one of their favorite things if they want to color that and take a photo of it and email it to me so that would be at david.mitchell at bridgewater.ca what i'd like to do is um if they include their first name and age and their parents say it's okay uh, i'd like to as we do these live streaming meetings show a couple of those um each week to the community i think it'll be something that kind of brightens some people's day and then we'll have a little contest and there'll be some prizes for uh for some of those so that's that's my um, announcement and we'll we'll post more details in the future how you doing there tammy i think i might have it it doesn't want to share right from teens so that's my my challenge right now How's that? There we go. Good. Great. OK. <laughs> so um, what you have before you is the 10-year uh, capital plan as well as the draft of the 2020-21 capital budget for next year. The council would have saw this earlier in the year, and at that time, some of our <clears throat> her numbers were draft, and we um, kind of presented to you kind of the landscape of what we were looking at going forward next year in terms of our expenditures as well as future years. So we've had some time to to um, work the numbers a bit, um, give some consideration to our debt service ratios as well as what our operating budget may be able to sustain this year in terms of funding some of these capital projects. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to kind of go over with you the capital budget summary. And this is one that shows us out to the year 2029-30 shows you um, uh, on the far right your total budget and your debt your debt ratio. So the amount of the capital budget each year, 
you have a more detailed handout that gives you the breakdown of what those projects are in each in each uh, fiscal year. Um, the point to show you here is that there is um, some assumptions in terms of what uh, what we're funding from operations going forward each year. Um, and I'm just looking at um, the 2021 year, and I want to correct uh, the capital from operating. That should be uh, one one million one hundred and seventy instead of five hundred and sixty four or five million six hundred and forty five. Sorry. So I, I ended up putting the total capital amount in there, and that should be one million one hundred and seventy being funded from operations. Um, and it shows you what we're borrowing from debt. So you can see that it, it uh, next year we're proposing to borrow 1.865 million. What gas tax funding we'll have with next year would be 1.375 because we got an extra payment last year of gas tax from the federal government. They announced that they were doubling gas tax amount. So we had some extra in reserve. So we're using that next year. We're using capital reserves of 184,000. We have other government funding of a million, and then other funding of 50,000, and that gives us our total budget of 5.6 million. And our debt service ratio is 4.41%. And the number for council to, to kind of keep an eye on is 15%. The, the recommended amount um, that uh, municipalities, municipalities are to stay under is 15%. You can go up to 30, but when you go over 15, you need ministerial approval for, for or they keep an eye on you anyway in terms of your spending. Uh, it gets a little harder to borrow, and your projects are looked at a little bit more thoroughly. So you can see each year our capital budget varies. And like the following year, it's 8.8. .8. We have some high years at 22, 23 at 9 million. Our born requirements also <coughs> um, in, increase as well. And that's under the debt. So you can see we have some high years there, 22, 23 of 4 million, um, and then 4.6 and 26, 27. I can say that a lot, when you look at our, our sheet, a lot of those projects are related to wastewater as well. Um, our debt service ratio around um, 25, 26 goes over 10% to 11, and then it increases, increases every year after that and it's reflection it usually of the borrowing that we've done a year or a year and a half to two years before that when we have to start paying back that the paying the principal and interest payments on this on those loans that we borrow for so your debt service ratio is one side of it and this slide is really to show you that we have some big capital obligations that uh, we have to be cognizant of as we move forward and look at our capital budget and as I mentioned, most of them do relate to wastewater and being able to meet the federal guidelines. And I believe it's by 2032 that we have to do that. So we have this is only half the picture. This is 10 years and, we've, and um, those projects will go well out beyond 10 years to meet those guidelines. And we are, as the council is aware, we are having a, a thorough assessment done of our wastewater system uh, this year that will provide us with detail in terms of the work that needs to be done and the and phasing of that. These numbers are based on a, a study that we had done back in 2018, I believe it was, and they provided some preliminary numbers. So the best numbers we have right now, and we'll, we'll continue to look at that this year and, and refine those numbers for future years. The next slide shows you, as I said, your debt service ratio is one side of it. So you need to be aware of your percentages. But those percentages really mean that your the amount that you're funding in terms of debt servicing costs out of your operations are going up. So it's a percentage of your tax revenue. And as your debt service ratio goes up, that means that you're funding more from your operations. So you can see that in 2021, next year, we'll have 759,979 in debt servicing costs. <clears throat> and then that increases the following year to a million. And then it gradually goes up over over the, the next 10 years to um, 2029 20, 30 at 3.3 million is our debt servicing cost. And to kind of put that into perspective for you, uh, one cent based on uh, assessment values or assessment role this year for 2020 and 21, one cent when you combine your residential and your commercial gives you $70,000 and tax revenue. 
If you just applied that to the residential, it would be 52,000. So that's, that's when you see an increase from 759 to a million, that's what that means. If you just divide that, that's what that means in terms of taxes, how many cents that's going to take to fund that. <clears throat> and just give you a, an idea of where we are with our with our reserves. You can see that we have a total of 5.15 million in reserves, and that's made up of capital and operating. So in capital we have 1.359, and then we have some gas tax, and this will be at the 2020-21 numbers. So 1.6 million in capital reserves, and then operating we have uh, reserves as well. Some of them are designated, meaning they're for specific purposes. So um, we have some various designated reserves of 960,000, 81,000 for parks, and then undesignated is 2.48 million. And there's a small amount for the museum. So our total operating is 3.5, and uh, that all, when all combined is 5.15 million in reserves. So if we went back to the slide before, <clears throat> some options that we have that we could change the debt service ratio or and, and ultimately then your debt servicing cost are to one look at your capital, of course, and um, what projects you may want to delay or postpone as we go forward. I would note again, most of them are wastewater and they are what's required to meet the, the regulations for 2032. These numbers were built based on a 10-year borrowing term, so that's you know that's a, a pretty good term. You you may decide that you want to look at the terms, the length of term for which you borrow, and increase that to 15 for some things. That's an option as well. Um, I think Don probably prefers 10. And your borrowing rate, we've made an assumption that that is 4% as well. You can also look at your capital reserves. So on, on this sheet, we showed you that you had some reserves. You could look at funding a bit more from um, reserves and building up those reserves over time too. So we are looking at our sewer rate and uh, making that gradually over time fund the system wholly. And that includes reserve allocations as well. So over time, not right away, but over time, you may have more reserves to help um, lessen the amount that you have to borrow. And of course, tax rates are always another way to do that, bring in more revenue and fund more from the operations as opposed to borrowing as well. So if you go back to this one, you can see that your other options are capital from operating, more government funding. So the numbers that you see here are based on only um, using the government funding numbers that we know we have. So we've made an application for some wastewater projects and so we know we have those and and that's in there now we haven't made any other assumptions so we could assume going forward that you um, would have two-thirds funding for all your wastewater and without it you can't do can't do the work and we did provide you with a, a pdf that shows you what we call a scenario two that shows you how that would play out in terms of reducing your debt service ratio if you got more government funding for projects in future years as well. And I would note that one of the things that Council did discuss this year was a grant coordinator that whose mandate would be to source government funding for projects. And ultimately what that'll do is lessen the amount that you have to borrow. And that would be the objective in that exercise. So what are some of the highlights in your 10-year capital plan? So all those big numbers, as I mentioned, the big piece of it is sanitary and wastewater. So $26 million is in that 10-year plan, and that's only a piece of what's required, but that that's those are big numbers in the plan. Some other bigger highlights, pavement renewal, we have 4.4 million over the next 10 years, traffic lights at about half a million. The business park, so all the, the, the infrastructure realignment out at the business park to facilitate the interchange, that's 4.2. <clears throat> and sidewalks and crosswalks, we have 1.5. King Street Phase 3 is in there as well at, at 1.7. Energized Bridgewater fully funded at 8.8. .8. So that doesn't have an impact on borrowing and taxes. We got grants for those. 
Generations Active Park is in the budget. We did push it out quite a few years, though, um, just because knowing that's why it's only 600000 because we, we start it towards the end of the 10 years, and then it would continue past that. But knowing all the sanitary and wastewater projects that were on, on the go, it just we just couldn't fit it in without impacting the debt service ratio too much. Um, parking lots, so the North Parkade is in there. Um, and we also have the museum parking lot in there as well. That's 361. Fire department has 1.46 million in us, and so I believe one of that is a as a truck, a ladder truck, I believe, in there at 1.2, which is a big part of it. And then they have some of their other equipment, breathing apparatuses. Those those things are in there. Uh, transit, so that's a bus, and also looking at a home for the buses. Um, that would be out of the elements. So there's 750,000 in there. And the police um, is mainly vehicles over the next 10 years, so replacing them as as their time comes due. And then we have 1.8 million in, in uh, public works equipment, which is a variety of different things, from generators to heavy equipment to trucks, those, um, to equipment to maintain our fields, all those things are in there. So that, those are our highlights. Uh, and I believe uh, we would now um, kind of turn it, unless you've got questions about the big picture, to going into the 2020-21 uh, capital budget in a little bit more detail. Does anyone have any questions on what you've seen in this slide deck before we move to the actual document? Uh, one, it's Bill McGinnis here. Uh, one question, uh, Tammy, uh, there is no provision made for any sales of land uh, from the expansion of the industrial park. No, when we sell land, we were required to put that into a reserve. So we didn't build that in as any of the revenue assumptions within our, um, with when we calculated kind of what our tax revenue would be. Um, but yeah, that's not in there. Other questions on that? Okay, we'll move into the actual document you're done with that Tammy you're ready to move into the actual document um, so everyone's um, everyone's got their capital list um, just trying to think it's so much easier to do this in person than it is remotely as as well as this does work it's it's uh, the flow is a little awkward um, I'll probably suggest that we we start with page one and instead of going line by line by line maybe I'll just ask people to um, to just um, identify who they are and um, call out any items on the first page that you have to have more questions on and then we've got staff here that can answer does that work for everybody if we do it that way it's good with me okay does anyone have any questions on the items on the first page Bill, Bill McGinnis I do yep Bill go ahead uh, I, yes uh, there's $150,000 for a King Street culvert, and uh, it's, it's a result of the Dorian uh, uh, hurricane we had. And I'm just wondering uh, if there's disaster relief for that, or do we know that? The federal government have a disaster relief package. Yeah. I'm just wondering if that could be considered for that. Yes. We're, um, I think Larry Matt is working on an application for that? Yes. Not, uh, not a our, certainty. Our staff is following up with the uh, the program people to see if uh, we're eligible. Okay, thank you. Do you have any yes. other questions on that first page, Bill? Yes, I do. Yep, do you, uh, just keep, why don't you keep going through your questions on the first page? Just, just have one more. The decorative lights on King Street, those are the street lights, I presume and it would appear they're not in good shape. How many lights are we replacing? It's a $300,000 number, I believe. And uh, and what part of King Street are we talking about? It would be all of downtown, and I believe uh, there may even be some in our parks as well. I think we have around 88 uh, in total. Some have been done with the upgrade, the previous upgrade of King Street. Last year, we did uh, the lights behind the TD Bank, for example. So the exact number might be a few less than originally before. 
Great, thank you. If I can just add to that same topic, um, just noting that they're called decorative lights, is there any, do we know any pots of money for um, grants for downtown beautification uh, or streetscape uh, funding sources that we could tap into? We have um, earmarked 25,000, I think, for a streetscapes grant for the railing on the North Parkade. The Department of Municipal Affairs just announced that they will be having their streetscaping and beautification program again this year. I think applications are due by June 1st, but the maximum amount available would be 25,000. So there's a few different projects that this could be uh, packaged towards. And we've already incorporated that into the capital funding as they, that's in front of you. Okay. 25,000, yeah. Okay, thank you. Does David, anyone else? Oh, sorry. It's Andrew here. I have two. Yep. yep. Um, just on the uh, payment renewal program, 400,000 seems low to me. What was last year's? Refresh my memory. 600,000. Okay. Um, and and uh, and the second question, I guess, is fire hall pump testing area. We were going to do some cost sharing on that, I believe, with some other units. And did we get any resolution to that? Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Modal has agreed to the memorandum of understanding. We're just waiting for it to be signed. Okay. And they've cost share fifty or fifty percent, so twenty five thousand. Yeah. And so that's the total budget you see there, and in the in the other funding is twenty five thousand from modal. Oh, sorry, I missed that sentence altogether. Okay, I'm sorry. Got it. Thank you. Bye. Michael here. Yes, Michael, go ahead. So just in regards to the decorative lights again, they can be replaced on an as it's needed basis. So three hundred k is a it's a lot of money. So you know, replace them as they need to be done. They, they can be a phased program. Um, I guess the the challenge would be whether or not that particular maker model will be available in the upcoming years. So, Good point. You, you know, the, the, the appearance might be slightly different um, if they're done in phased programs. Okay, thank you. Other questions on the first page? Uh, Cheryl here. Go ahead, Cheryl. Cheryl? Uh, yep. Just a question about the police, police uh, department vehicle. Um, I know usually there's one that we upgrade each year in the fleet. Um, this particular one is uh, 2017 with 98,000 kilometers. Is that the norm for replacement as far as when we look at the year and kilometers of the vehicle? I was I trying they, to... They, oh, sorry. I was talking to Scott this afternoon and he said it right now it has 112,000 on it. So it was probably okay. 98 maybe at the time they did the budget. So I think that I'm not sure what the replacement threshold is, but I think it's around that. I think they do a do a um, kind of a scenario based on how much it costs to keep that vehicle in service as well. Yeah. And it gets to a certain yeah. number and it and it costs more to keep it up and running than it does to replace it. it but the more. So, I think yeah, those are hard can, miles. Yeah. Hard miles, yeah. Yeah, all okay. And that down would and be, I guess, that would go out for tender, but are they the Durangos as well? Is that? They would be replaced with the Durangos, yeah. yeah. Or we would request, I believe they would request a, an all wheel drive police vehicle, with, so that would eliminate the cars. And so it would be the two options right. that they have, and, they, and the Durango is the much cheaper of the two. So I would anticipate okay. that's what it would come back as. Okay. So, so David, just on that point, um, with the uh, the cost of maintenance versus the cost of buying new, using that logic, though, aren't we then saying that this vehicle um, would cost sixteen thousand dollars to keep it on the road if you divide the forty eight thousand by three? Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. I know, I know they cost a lot when they get to a point. I don't know if it's sixteen thousand dollars. It's a good question. We can maybe ask. Um, ask Scott to give us some further information on on what the particular costs of this vehicle are annually. Um, mm -hmm. I know further to that I was asking um, as a board member for some more information on moving to uh, an electric option because there's some information out of the US that says 
the annual cost of having an electric police car is about six thousand dollars cheaper than a um, a gasoline powered car so kind of going through all those scenarios and, and including the one that you're pointing out both andrew and cheryl that you know how much does it cost to keep it on the road um so don maybe we could get some a little bit more detail from scott i think he usually explains how much these cars cost yeah i've made a note service. Yeah, I've made a and, note. And so if I I'll could ask just him. ask, uh, when they do this scenario, I know they look at options, but uh, I can't recall if they do extend warranty, if it's in their best interest to do warranty. I'm just wondering where, where if we cost that out, if, um, if we're keeping the vehicle, would it be beneficial to have extended warranty on these cars? Okay, I'll pass that along to him. Um, yeah. I would just add that one of the things that that Scott does indicate is that when when the vehicle has downtime because of maintenance issues, that downtime costs us more than just the downtime for the repair. So there's uh, they need that that's their job. They need cruisers to do it, right? So he has to weigh that as well in terms of when when we do replacement. So it's not always waiting until the repairs get so so out of control that we it's cheaper to buy. It's the time involved in it as well. And I guess my my further question to that car is, usually what happens is one of these cars comes out of service. That car that comes out of service <coughs> replaces something older in the fleet so that we don't, we aren't necessarily selling this particular car, but this car may replace a really old car that is being used for another purpose. Yeah, they uh, often replace the admin car. Right. Yeah. So, so I'd be curious to know if this is what's going to happen. Where do our used vehicles go? They go to uh, our surplus sale. So once a year we do we gather all our surplus and put a a tender out and people bid on it. So who's been buying the police cars out of curiosity? Just off the street people or police I, department somewhere else? I no no off the street people and they okay. normally don't. They don't, we don't get much money for them. Okay. Any other questions on the first page? Nope. Going once, going twice. Okay. We'll go to page two. And I'll just open it up. Does anyone have any questions on the items on page two? So, David, just. <laughs> Uh, general question is, so are we just walking through this right now with general questions? We're not suggesting things go up or down or how are we handling that? Uh, yeah, Tammy, how did you yeah. want to, I, I just thought we were taking general we're questions right thinking, now. Okay. We're looking for some direction from council with respects, with respects to this budget because um, it helps us finalize the operating budget too, which is coming to council on the 14th. So we have some assumptions about what we're funding um, out of operations, capital from operating. And so if, if there are changes that you want to see to the budget concern you have, those are things that we would, that will influence what our operating budget looks like as well. All right, then I would suggest we probably go back to page <laughs> one because I think there's probably, um, yeah. Yeah. there's probably I, some questions regarding pavement management, I would think. There you go, bingo. Um, so let's go back, sorry. All right, um, so payment renewal program, I know um, Andrew raised the $400,000 um, as a number. I know that last year was six, Don said. Um, I, I, I know, I guess before I start, where, where, where I'd like to see us, and, and I know this is gonna be a challenging year for every community across the country. And so I just, for me, this is just my thoughts and we can discuss this. Um, I'd like to see us when we pass, especially the capital budget, that before we go out to even create the tenders for big ticket items, that staff come back to council to say, we're about to prepare this tender. Do you still want to go ahead with this project? Mostly because we're going to pass this budget in April and we don't know what May or June or July is going to look like. Um, so for me, I, I, I just want a little bit of um, caution in those non-mandatory um, ones. Like I know all this whole col columns is mandatory, but 
pavement renewal can be a dollar or it can be a million dollars versus wastewater where we have no choice. Um, I just think we have to be very careful um, going forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I'm saying there. So yep. to that end, if we discuss changing pavement renewal before we go out to prepare the tenders, does it make sense? I guess I'm looking for guidance from council for that to just come back back for staff to go. Are you sure you passed it at let's say six hundred thousand dollars? Are you sure you want us to go out for six hundred thousand dollars when we've had trouble? Um, where we have businesses that have trouble paying their taxes because of this crisis. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, I would have a question for Larry on that in terms of how do we tender for that now? Is it, it not by the job? Is it by quantity or like how does that work? Yeah, it's by quantity, <clears throat> excuse me, and it would also include the 200,000 that's in operations for payment improvements. So if, if we were to do a check in with council on something like that, how would it look? Um, it would, I guess it would come to council to a uh, council meeting to see if they wanted to change the value to change the budget. Yeah, so we would, it probably wouldn't be by job, it would be by the total dollar figure that you want to devote to pavement renewal. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It would, but we, um, you know, the the the, the amounts uh, is based on the approved budget, so we'd need to know if council would want to reduce that budget in advance of the tender. And I guess that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to make make it too hard for for staff, but I, I do have some concerns about what happens if we start doing projects and then realize that our tax revenue is way down. I know this is capital; it's borrowing, but um yeah what are, what are the other thoughts around the table on that i have a question if i may yes go ahead larry how would that affect your planning right now if you knew the budget was somewhat uncertain I, you know are there major projects that you're you might be looking for well you've got some pre-approvals but any major projects that you would have difficulty going out to tender early enough on if you if things were a little bit uncertain are you asking just in relation to pavement management for, or all pro yes. all major projects? You pavement management at this point, just just around your planning and preparing for the year. It, it wouldn't change for that. We uh, assess all the streets every year and rate them, and then we uh, select which projects from that master list based on the budget that's approved. So for planning purposes and for the uh, the pre work, uh, it wouldn't change at all. Okay, but it could extend the the turnaround time on a tender. It could because we'd have to come back to right. council for that check in. Yes, which is already kind of a struggle. Am, am I correct in that the tender process and then by the time we get people into town and paving where we're often late in the season? It, it is. It's usually a fall thing by the time we uh, get the work done. Right. Okay. Thank you. No, that's a, that's a very good point, Jennifer. So, like, yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to make it slower. So we can we can say no, or we can um, just go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't want to delay pavement management. I don't want to because sometimes these things cost more money when we wait longer too. So, can I ask another question? Yes, Tammy. Um, in I, I know this is unprecedented. Are there ways that we can handle a an uncertain year when we're we're uncertain who's going to be able to pay their taxes, who isn't, how long this is going to go on? Is there anything we can do to kind of protect ourselves? Um, well, I think at this point we're we're still trying to we're waiting to see if there's going to be any any indication from the province in terms of uh, whether a program or relief or some some directive in terms of how municipalities are to provide that relief to the residents. So it's a consistent approach as what we're, we're hoping for. While we wait for that, I think probably the mayor's suggestion is all you have because we're really shooting in the dark at this point. We can um, make some assumptions about uncollectibles, those types of things, but that's really a cash flow thing and we could do some temporary borrowing or pull from reserves to, to balance that out. Um, but if we're not sure in terms of how long, what the impact is, it's only been two weeks really, right, that we've been in kind of this mode. Um, it's probably best at this point um, to 
look at the budget as if we're moving ahead status quo, but be cautious in terms of how we proceed with some of these larger projects. And yes, it will add some time to uh, like Larry's payment renewal work. He'll have to might add three weeks to that, you know, because he has to come back to council, prepare the report, do the get the check in, and then and then go out to tender. But it's probably the safest thing for the next little while anyway, until we get a better picture of what what it's going to look like in terms of the impact and what what are the options that municipalities are going to be looking at for relief. Because you know, there's been all kinds of comments about if you just defer taxes, you're just kicking the bill down the road, you know, like so there's you know, it, we coming up with the right solution will take some time. Okay, thank you. And and probably there's a way for Larry to look at, at this capital list and come back to us at some point and say, these 10 items, if you delay them by even three weeks, you're going to cost us more money or you're going to take us into the next season. But some of these things, um, there's no problem just waiting for council. So if pavement management, and to Jennifer's point, if, if, we, if we delay it and it puts us in a different position that makes it unreasonable for Larry's team to get the work done in a reasonable time, then that's probably one we don't want to do that. But I certainly don't mind saying when it's time to buy a car or time to buy a truck, can you just check in with council because this may not be the year to buy a truck or when you're going to buy a million dollar piece of equipment or some of those larger ticket items um, where it's, it can wait a year or, or it can wait six months. And I know some things can't, so maybe it's something we can fine tune. We don't have to do that tonight but we can find when this budget is approved what we want to come back to council um, and what doesn't if that makes sense so going through this this first page again and looking for some direction from council um, pavement managers one andrew you you kind of questioned the 400 are you looking for it to well, go to where it was last year yeah at, at least to where it was last year with the um, as you mentioned the ability to for us to say well you know we've, we've gotten to another month or two down the, the track and there's just not the, uh, the support there to uh, to do it or the, the money there to do it so at least at least as much as last year and what we did last year was we increased it one year and then we left all the rest of the year so is that is that council's wish that we would increase this year's and then talk about next year's next year or yeah yeah I think my so. so am I hearing six hundred thousand or yes. more? Yeah, Bill McGinnis here. I have a question. Did I hear someone say there was two hundred thousand dollars in operating for pavement management as well? Yes. Yeah. So that's just six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. No, yes. six hundred right? It was, right? was six hundred plus two hundred last yes. year. Six becomes eight. So yeah. it was eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's yeah. what we're asking again. Is is anyone disagree with moving that four hundred to six hundred? Yeah, I would say I would, Michael. You just okay. I'm I think, okay with you know, increasing. Yeah. It's uh, trying times, and uh, you know it's a lot of money, and I don't think people really, really, really expect to have the roads paved. Um, it's nice to have, and it, it's, but you know, it's two hundred thousand extra dollars, right? And uh, you know, I don't know if we can rely on the government. They're certainly putting out a lot of money, provincial and federal governments, and I don't know if we're going to have the grants available that we're that we're hoping to get David uh, yes Wayne just a couple of questions I guess it goes back to Larry I'm, I'm certainly in support of the 600,000 I think I suggested that last year but I see we got a hundred thousand dollars now in Pinecrest subdivision we've been working on that for eight years is it possible to take a year off of that and save a hundred thousand there or at least bring it back to 50,000 it jumped to a hundred this year um. It's, yeah, I mean, it used to be a fifty thousand dollar a year project. Sometimes yeah. uh, it, it it's depending on the scope of work. Sometimes you don't get very far for fifty thousand. Um, it is also a, a a big benefit for separating stormwater from sanitary. So it's uh, it it certainly helps our wastewater system as well. Okay, I, I just noticed there was a jump in there, double from previous years on that, and. If we need it, we certainly need it. Uh, I have no no questions about it. Thanks, Larry. Okay. So I'm hearing uh, Wayne and Andrew are in, in favor of the 600. Michael, no. And is there anyone else not in favor of moving it to 600? 
OK, so right now, uh, Michael, I'm hearing that we're going to 600. And of course, yep. when we when we come to budget time, it, uh, first of all, that number can change, of course, but um, uh, we can we'll debate it again. Uh, anything else on that first page where councillors question uh, um, questioning the numbers or wanting an increase or decrease or to have it removed? OK, we're moving to the second page again. Um, now the pre-approved ones, obviously those are pre-approved. So uh, on that second page, those are done. Um, so excluding those, is there any any questions on the items on the second page? So just a question about the side sidewalk plow. Didn't yes. we get one a couple years ago? Uh, yeah, we re we replaced our equipment on a I guess a a set schedule, and it would depend on things like age, the maintenance costs, and things like that. And this uh, is due, I guess, based on that schedule and costs. Is this something we can put off? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, as council is probably aware, uh, we primarily operate two sidewalk plows as part of our main service with the third being a spare uh, backup should one break down that we can continue to operate the two pieces. So it is something that could be delayed. And uh, if so, there's just that risk that, you know, we may be down to uh, one piece of equipment. So, and to me, this is a this is another great example of of um, if this item happened to stay in the budget, I would I would ask staff to come back to council before putting the tender out to say, are you sure you want us to still go to go out with this? I think vehicles are a great example of something that, at least for me, I I um. I'd want to see what the landscape is, the current climate rather, of, of where we're at in the situation before we go out to tenders and just get that kind of, uh, we'd, we'd know at least by then if there's government programs to Michael's point or if there's government grants or if we're going to be in this for the longer haul than we thought. What are other people's thoughts on, on that? So we currently have two, uh, two uh, sidewalk plows. With a spare. With a spare. That's correct. Three machines in total. So we're going. To, if we buy a new one, we will are going to get rid of one, I presume. Yes, the oldest uh, one with the most hours and the most maintenance cost. And will we trade it in? Or will we sell it, or will we do something with it? Do we have any idea? Does it have any value at all? Uh, it would have value. We usually look at both options. We'll see what the trade-in value is, and if we feel that it's fair, we'll take advantage of that. And if we feel that it's not fair, then it would go to our surplus uh, list that uh, goes out, out for sale in usually September or so. Yeah. I'm on the fence with that right now, uh, so I'm, I'm prepared to leave it in at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Couple of questions, David. Yes, Wayne. Uh, Larry, that boiler replacement last year, if I remember correct, it was two hundred thousand dollars, and I see this year in the budget it's three hundred thousand. Is that a typo? Uh, no, that was to allow for the um, uh, alternate technology, uh, the power generating that council has asked us to look at. But you're only spending fifty thousand this year, and you're spending two hundred fifty and twenty-one, twenty-two. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have uh, a number of people looking at what options we have available to us to uh, provide that power generation. Okay. And my next question was: We, I see there's a set of lights in there for for the uh, junior high school. I, I think with the way things are going there, do we really need those lights in there, the crosswalk lights? So we um, completed, a, I guess, an internal study uh, of all our crosswalks around town. 
And from that study, it was recommended that um, I'll say more attention is brought to that area because of the sensitivities with the school, the amount of traffic and stuff. So basically mid block crosswalks were suggesting, uh, you know, additional safety features other than just the uh, typical white and black uh, crosswalk signs. That's why we've been introducing the overhead crosswalks for years now. Uh, and this is one of those locations that have mid block crosswalks. So so further to that, if I can jump in with. With the addition of that speed sign that was up for a while, <laughs> and we, we know that the data we got back showed that people were actually uh, maintaining or going below the speed limit more than um, more than people thought. And also that we do have cross guards. Um, is is an is overhead signalization something that's required? Or can we look at? Uh, I know you said that the regular black and white crosswalk isn't necessarily ideal. Can we go with? Um, is this a great example or a great location for like a rainbow crosswalk that would perhaps give a little bit more um, pop to it so that people see it, uh, um, and then we could save the twenty five thousand dollars. The well, the rainbow uh, is. Um, paint marks is not recognized in regulations. However, the overhead beacons and the rapid flash beacons are. So we'd suggest using those types of technologies that's already uh, approved and regulated. Have we spoken to the school board about cost sharing uh, on the signalization? No, we have not. Uh, we attended our first meeting um, of, of various stakeholders, including our police as well, with regards to discussion of potential future improvements around the area. I anticipate there'll be more meetings and it's certainly something that we can bring up to see if it's something they would entertain. I, I think we should formally make that request to the school board. I mean, you know, it's we're doing our best to keep the, the children safe in our town and so on, and uh, I think they should also take some responsibility there to help with that. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can we can write that letter from um, from my desk and make that request if that's what council wishes. I, it's Cheryl. I, I just had a question for Larry. Yeah. Go ahead, Cheryl. Um, so the. Um, would this go in front of the Bridgewater Elementary or the Junior High? Um, I just wanted to double check. Because they're both uh, mid crosswalks. Um, yeah. It says Junior High, but I would think it would make more sense to be down by the elementary, no? I'm not seeing the line item. Are you, you're on page yeah. two? Bottom of the page. Page right. two, the very last item. It last does item the say page. junior high. Uh, mine must be printed different. Just That's one. on page three of what you've got. Yeah, I was going to say oh, for us, okay. the electronic version, it's page three. Okay, yeah, sorry. We're That's all right. Us older folk are using these giant <laughs> sheets of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Like three from the top. Yeah. Uh, just this right is, under sidewalk plow. Yeah. Uh, this would be just the one location. A junior okay. high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think part of the reason is because the crossing guard's not always at that location. I, I believe that uh, sometimes they go to the intersection of Dominion and uh, sometimes that crosswalk's not not manned by a cross crossing guard. Okay. Okay. Because I I took from that conversation with that stakeholder meeting that there'll be there'll hopefully be more follow up and, and maybe more conversations from that. For the letter we've discussed, can we uh, maybe get an idea of what those intersections, what what the cost is? I mean, we we're talking about crossing guards, police presence, overhead lights, all for you know. A, a, a block's length. Um, I think it's important for them to know the amount of money we're investing in um, making sure that that's a safe crossing. If we're going to be asking them to, to help us out with some of that expense, I think they need to know the, the extent of 
of uh, the expense that goes into it as well. Yep, no, we can add, add that too, for sure. So I'm hearing some questions on, on the on the signalized crosswalk and at least looking for some perhaps feedback and some participation from the school board. Um, do we want to leave that in there and kind of add it to the check before check with council before you go to tender on that um, list or do people want it removed or do they want it in there only if there's a funding arrangement? I would suggest we leave it in there uh, for the time being and then before we actually do it, let's see where we are, but we definitely should be asking the school uh, to help out with it. It's not a large expenditure, but you know, uh, we seem to be always, always giving and very rarely receiving from those people. Okay, is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I think leave it in there and that there'll hopefully be more discussion on it to give us more direction as to if there's a cost share. Okay. I have a I question. Agree. Sorry, I was just agreeing. <laughs> I have a Go question ahead, on the on the arena renovations. Yeah, have we, have we approved that we're going to be staying in that building or what we're going to do with it? No, the um, the number that you have in there, 150, we uh, the original number was, I believe, um, eight over a million, just over a million to do renovations to see um, the upstairs renovated for the um, performing arts. And then we had the farmer's market kind of concept in the bottom with some other community use. Yeah. Um, Given the budget and kind of looking at our debt service ratios and trying to make the numbers work and keep us under that 15% long term, uh, at the staff level, we took that out and left it at 150, which is really just putting in, and correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, but bay door, a bay door so we can get and, and, and make some small modifications so we can get the, the buses in and use that for uh, enclosed storage for, for the buses and um and accommodate parks stuff there as well but no no plan for anything else at this point and with that we note that there will need to be at some point a long-term plan made with respects to how we're going to house transit permanently with the is it going to be with the public works garage um and if it is what are we going to do with the arena long term but this was just a uh, something to to give us a, a solution for the buses right now and recognizing that our budget really doesn't accommodate without significant funding any type of renovations that would allow for um, any other use within that building. So, so Rick, that's a short term fix. Yep. But the renovations we are doing, if we decide to go ahead with that plan, we could use these renovations. Yeah, because the plan was to use part of the facility for transit and parks anyway. Okay. Are there any other questions on what we're calling page two, but it takes us it takes us from uh, uh, clarifier refurbished all the way down to the junior high crosswalks. For those who are on the digital copy, that's what we're looking at on the paper copy. <laughs> any questions on that? Any more? No. OK, now I got to figure out how to flip this so I don't make a mess of it. OK, so page three. Um, that is from traffic light analysis down to um, police department police vehicle. And I guess I'll just jump in and say there's two there's two vehicles on this. There's three vehicles on this list. Um, certainly two of them. So the truck and the police car, I would just just before you go to tender on those, I guess just um, maybe that would be on my list of can you just check with council so um, i would i would point out that on that page uh, mayor halfway down you switch to another fiscal yeah. year yeah yeah so those be you uh the fiscal year the last the last oh project, my gosh yep yeah is the wastewater treatment plant pump station float conversion that's yeah. the last one yeah so those, those other vehicles okay, are okay so those yeah those trucks yeah. are in the next year sorry those yeah. vehicles yeah that's what their reno renovations are too I think uh, personally, I think we need a uh, a longer, deeper discussion about the North Parkade. 
I'm still not clear on the long-term costs of, of maintaining that and, and what we're doing uh, versus other op options for that. Uh, and I'm not sure where that stands. So I, I think we if I look, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you might be breaking in and out there, Andrew, maybe a little. Um, Larry, uh, the question was asked at our last meeting about um, the concern that, well, the amount that we have in here of uh, doing the um, aesthetic improvements of 190,000 and the work that we did last year, that would essentially, that gives us 10 years until we're looking at a deck replacement. And the deck replacement had a $1.2 million price tag, I believe, um, attached to that. And the question was asked, what is the lifespan of that structure? Because we really don't want to replace a deck to find out that we, we've got another five years and, and that's it. So um, what are we looking at? And I think, Larry, you you uh, sent a piece of email correspondence today that suggested that there would be some minimal um, structural repairs needed, but it's a question of really uh, what's the cost of that long term? And... Um, Larry had also had the suggestion that maybe council, you know, if you're questioning the parkade, maybe uh, a traffic study to determine the need, a parking study, I guess, to determine the need might be something you want to do to, to examine whether or not there is sufficient parking in our downtown area already without having that structure in place. Mm -hmm. if, if you're concerned about the long-term viability and cost, because in 10 years, I think the price was $1.2 Yeah, I mean, so so I'm looking at three hundred thousand dollars for this year for that parkade, right? Yeah. Yeah. Plus whatever minor maintenance you might have annually each year up till year ten. Um, you've got the one point two at year ten, let's say, which is probably one point five by the time we get there, if not more. And then we really don't have a number on maintaining those columns that are close to the water and and so on. So. I guess for me, it's I'd, I'd love to see an all all encompassing kind of picture and best guess is to get us to year ten um, completely, and then you know what's the traffic uh, situation look like? What's the cost of truly just taking it down, which I think we we know already, and and what options do we have there? It, it just seems like we're throwing good money after bad, so to speak, or bad money after good, or whatever the phrase is, but. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that, folks? Well, I, 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 I'm a, of the same thought as uh, Councillor Tanner. I, I'm, I'm, I struggle with that. Uh, I'm concerned about the uh, undercarriage steel work. Uh, we have no idea what that's going to cost us uh, after 10 years, uh, and uh, uh, it's just, it's just going to be a difficult uh, decision. You're, you're, you're looking at uh, 10 years out. Uh, they put their best. Uh, best number they could come up with for what it would cost to replace the actual concrete floor. Uh, I'm not a big believer in that number. I think it'll be a lot more. So uh, I think we should have a further discussion on to it because I'm, uh, I'm fairly concerned about what that is actually going to cost us. Okay. Is that something you want to leave in for this year or do you want to pending future discussions or did you want to move it a year or take the it work, out? The work that's required this year, it's it's not mandatory work. Um, a lot of it is aesthetic. So for the um, uh, kind of the surfacing of, of, of the parquet to make it look better. Um, and the railings. And the railings, yeah. yeah. So they're not they're not mandatory. So if you're not ready to really commit 300,000 to the parkade, we can pull it and put it in next year, or we can leave it in there and just circle it and say we're not, it, it'll make up your budget number, but we're not going to go anywhere with it until you've had a good thorough discussion and agreed to it. And and don't get me wrong, I, I mean, I, I despise the look of it as it is today. I think most people look at it and say, oh my gosh, that thing is hideous, so to speak, and it needs some work. Um, but I just don't want to keep throwing money at it, um, you know, if we don't know the total picture over 10 years. I'd be willing to pull it. 
Yeah, I would be too. I, I think we need a, a future discussion and a better plan of action. So, so the question is, do we do we pull it out of this year or do we, as Tammy said, do we circle that and before we do any work on that, have a more robust discussion? Because I think we have questions on what it looks like on year 11, 12, 13 going forward. Um, what other options are for us? For me, um, again, I hate to keep bringing up the crisis we're in, but we do not know what the small business landscape of downtown <clears throat> anywhere in Canada is going to look like. And so um, I just, for me, I want to be really cautious before we put money into a, a parking structure downtown. Um, I want to make sure we have businesses downtown to continue to support. So I guess the question back to council is, do you want to push this to next year or do you want to circle it and it makes up this year's budget number, but we don't move on it until we have a more uh, a more detailed discussion? What what are your thoughts? I say push it. Push it out. OK. Yep. Yep. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's challenging times. Yeah, we need further discussion and, and, and more in-depth knowledge of what what the future costs might be and, and to push it out. Okay. Would there be any uh, annual maintenance costs for this year that we have budgeted? Yeah, the operations budget will include a, a maintenance cost, whether it's simple things like signage or the rail or um, even holes in the deck, you know, for public safety. So certainly the okay. operations budget will include a maintenance. Okay. Okay. Uh, I personally think we should uh, circle it and have a more robust discussion onto it. I would agree with Bill. I, I agree we circle it and, and leave it in for now. I agree as well. Jennifer? Yeah, circle it and leave it in for now. David, I would also argue that, you know, we, we truly don't know what the uh, small business landscape is going to be like once we come out of this. Um, but the the alternate argument could be had that, maybe we want uh, this place to look spick and span to attract new businesses that may be trying to start up after it all ends. Yeah, and I guess that's that's kind of where I, I also would like to just circle it because circling it does mean when push comes to shove, we could say we're not doing this in 2020, 2021. Yeah. Um, but if the government programs work, if small businesses are looking to um, to rebound, who knows? Um, so, but I, I am hearing the majority are are wanting this to be circled. Um, so I do want to assure those that did want to push it out that this is something that it won't be done until we have that discussion. So I want to make that part clear. Does that work for everybody? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any other items on that page? I was all excited to talk about the 2008 truck that we're still driving around in the town because I thought <laughs> small miracle. <laughs> it is the very first hybrid for a municipality in the province of Nova Scotia. It was. Yeah. Um, okay, that's. That Could I ask one more question? Yes, of course. Um, how much more money we're going to spend on the heating system at the town hall? <laughs> well, we do have money. <laughs> In the budget for that over the is next. There a long range, is there a long range plan for that? <laughs> yeah. Um, Probably to build a new town hall. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cheaper. We do have uh, 35,000 this year and 35,000 next year to look at the heat pump. And I think this year we're working on um, level two. And then the following year, is it level, I believe, level three or vice versa? It's now working on, on level four at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not freezing anymore. No, I, I just ask because we, we, we seem to spend money on that every year. Mm -hmm. And it never seems to be working. I don't mind spending the money if it worked. Anyway. I, th I think the fix that they did just do, I think it is it is working. Now I've probably jinxed it. If Sandra was here, she would say you just jinxed it, so don't tell her, but um, uh, it is it seems to be working, but I'm with you, Bill. <laughs> We've spent a lot more money since we installed a new system. Yeah, 
anyway. Any other questions on? Uh, so I guess that's it for this document. Any other questions for staff? While we have, have we still have um, Jessica and Larry and Dawn and Tammy here. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yep. Sorry, that was a no. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything else to come before council? No. I guess one, one question I would have is uh, about the assumptions around funding for the big wastewater projects in terms of how we present the funding. Like, do we want to assume two thirds funding for the big wastewater projects or do we want to assume we're not going to get funding? So is in the past, have we, are we confident that we would receive two thirds funding? No. No, and normally we would not. So I think you we would not budget that. But mm -hmm. the other, the other, the other way to look at it, I guess, is that we can't afford it, and if somebody doesn't come through with two thirds funding, we won't be able to meet twenty thirty two. I mean, I think you you have to we have to ensure that we're presenting a, a an accurate public document, right? So if we can't say with some sense of assurance that we're going to get two thirds funding, I don't think it's I don't think oh, it's there's... right to present it as two thirds. So that I think you sense. have to present it as as you have, which is you know it's a kind of a worst case scenario, and then anything that we can secure from other levels of government just makes it more palatable. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it does push the date ratios over 15% toward the in year 10. In year 10. Is, I, yeah. I mean, I, I can't. So we envision, have some time to work with that. But yeah, I can't envision, envision a scenario, especially after this crisis is over, where there are not infrastructure programs. Like if you look back to 2008, 2009, yeah. the government needed to get people working. And so they, they un, unleashed these these boatloads of money for infrastructure projects. These ones happen to actually be infrastructure projects with a mandated deadline, right, of 2032. So these aren't wants, these are needs. So not to say we're going to get two thirds funding for all of them, but I can't imagine there are not some of these items under wastewater that we cannot secure more funding. So. But like you said, Don, we have we have time before we get to that fifteen yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, but I think we have to present it fairly to the public and reflect it as really what it is, which is we can't guarantee that two thirds. Yeah. One of the things that I'm, I'm, Don, when you did your memo that that uh, accompanied kind of the scenario one and scenario two, one of the assumptions was a ten-year borrowing term for. Yes, for that's capital. true. Yeah. So for sewer systems, uh, you know, there's this. Uh, fixed and moving part type lifespan and it, they're more than 10 years. Oh, way more than 10 yeah. years. Yeah. And we could go to 15 without an issue because mm -hmm. 15 is the most you can borrow through Municipal Finance Corp without a balloon payment. Yeah. Because a balloon payment obviously introduces interest rate risk. That's and right. the rates are great now, but what are they going to be in 15 years? If you go for a 20 year debenture, you'd have to have a balloon payment. But we so could, could your scenario go to 15. Could your scenario one and scenario two be 10 years and 15 years then? Sure. And maybe we could just do 15 years for the big wastewater yeah. Yeah. as opposed to all of it. Is, it, yeah, is, uh, that's, is council in agreement of that? That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll change it to 15 years for the big wastewater, but no external funding because we don't know for sure we'll get it. Can I ask Don uh, a question I already know the answer to? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, because if I can't answer it, you can. Yeah, I got the answer already, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm assuming and, and I'm quite sure that these numbers at the end are, are taken off the payments we make each year on our debt. Yes. Uh, you mean, are the debt payments taken into consideration? That's correct. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, I told you I knew it, but there you go. Good job. <laughs> All right. Anybody have anything else before we adjourn? No. Okay. So look at that. Beating two virtually in the bag. All right. Beautiful. Thank, thank you to.
uh, thank you to staff for um, you know joining us today, and uh, thank you, council. Thank you again, Tammy. And uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Wayne. Seconded by Cheryl. Second Cheryl. Motion. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Perfect. Take Good care. Bye bye.